Today on Earth Focus, Dr. Jeffrey Patterson, former president of Physicians for Social Responsibility on the links between nuclear power and human health. Coming up on Earth Focus. Well, first of all, there is no safe dose of radiation. The BEER, or B-E-I-R, Biological Effects of Ionizing Radiation Report, that was put out by the National Academies of the United States, says that there's a direct linear relationship between dose of radiation and production of cancers, and that radiation is cumulative. So the more x-rays we have, the more radiation we're exposed to, the greater the chances that we're going to get cancer are. In addition, uh, radiation varies by how old you are, uh, the younger you are, uh, if you're female rather than male, you're more sensitive to radiation uh, than if you're older. We basically get three sources of radiation in our lives. First is background radiation. Background radiation is in the air. It comes from the rocks that uh, surround us. Sometimes it's in uh, basements, in homes, where if there's too much radon, uh, radiation from the rocks in the basements, you have to remedy that and provide ventilation because breathing that radi radon as background radiation causes lung cancer. The second source is medical radiation. Radiologists discovered that they were dying at earlier ages than other physicians because they were exposed to x-rays. X-ray uh, damage is cumulative, uh, and even in the medical profession now, there's a huge movement to try and decrease the numbers of x-rays that we give to people. The third, th third source of radiation is from that from the nuclear industry, and that's nuclear power, nuclear weapons. And that source is being uh, given to the entire population of the world through nuclear testing. And we discovered back in the 50s and 60s that children had strontium-90 in their teeth from nuclear weapons testing uh, around the world. And that led to the Above Ground Test Ban Treaty, which put testing underground and, and decreased that amount of radiation. But that radiation is still in the atmosphere. It's in, I'm certain, in my teeth because I grew up in Iowa, which was fairly heavily irradiated. Um, and now from the nuclear power industry. And that radiation leaks out all the way along the nuclear cycle from the time we dig it out of the ground and it's in the tailings which release radon into the atmosphere that we breathe in uh, to refining uranium for nuclear fuel, uh, to producing nuclear weapons, and then finally to the end of the fuel cycle where we have no idea what to do with the waste. And that nuclear waste is gonna be with us forever. First of all, the major thing that we've looked at is cancer. And most of our information about uh, the effects of radiation come from the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings. And those were one-time doses of radiation. The bomb exploded about 1,000 feet in the air, gave a dose of gamma and x-rays to the population. There was very little fallout and very little radiation from the fallout from that. So it was like getting a big x-ray. And 100,000 people or so died in Hiroshima immediately from the thermal effects, and then 100,000 or more have died subsequently in the 65 years that we've been following these people. And there may be other diseases associated with uh, radiation, immune deficiencies, uh, heart attack and stroke, which we're now seeing in the Hiroshima population as well. So now we're looking at huge populations of people from Chernobyl uh, and now from uh, Fukushima uh, that are being exposed to a different type of radiation, and that is radionuclides that come out of these plants and stay in the atmosphere. They're ingested, they're breathed in, uh, they're taken in in our food uh, to lodge in our bodies and continue to irradiate us for the rest of our lifetimes. So this is a very different uh, picture and the extrapolations that we've attempted to make from Hiroshima and Nagasaki, again, a one-time dose of radiation, may well not be accurate when looking at this long-lived radiation that stays in our bodies forever. So we'll never know the results of these studies because uh, this is going to go on for hundreds and hundreds of years because these nucleides are going to stay in the ground, coming up in the plants, uh, stay in the soil, in the water, uh, to be ingested by people and animals. 
ionizing radiation, which is what we're talking about with x-rays and with nuclear particles that, that come off from disintegrations of uh, cesium or plutonium, uh, pass through cells, and as they pass through cells, they pull off electrons from um, uh, cells, cellular things like DNA, and they then that's why they're called ionizing, and that uh, alters the structure of the DNA. Now the body has wonderful repair mechanisms and can repair uh, a fair amount of that, but. Uh, we know again that there's no safe dose of radiation then, and that every dose will lead to some cancers if we look at a large enough population. The problem is that it's very hard to pick out the cancer that's caused by either the x-ray that you had from the cancer that may be occurring from uh, other sources. We know that, uh, that each x-ray or each um, particle that's ingested in your body does produce genetic damage. And so uh, the more that you have, the more the damage, the more likely you are to get cancer, and the more likely uh, it is to produce other genetic abnormalities in the body that may affect diseases uh, in you, and possibly in your progeny, because these genetic changes may be passed on uh, to future generations. And this is probably one of the areas that we know the least about, and maybe the most worrisome in terms of uh, the future of the human population and the, the biology of other species too. It's not just humans who are affected by this. The short answer is no. Nuclear power can never be made safe. We can never eliminate the prospect of accidents like this and the track record is very poor. And it's only by the grace of God or sure luck uh, that we have not had uh, a Fukushima situation in this country. So we're leaving this legacy to our children, our grandchildren, uh, and indeed many generations down the road. Uh, and I honestly believe that uh, there will come a time when they will either curse us or uh, look at this situation and say, how could we have done this? Uh, how could we have been so selfish and um, so centered on our own immediate needs to give this terrible poisonous problem to uh, future generations. Now on U.S. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.